everybody, here we are in the studio of Staffordshire Car Care here in the UK. Just a quick rundown of what's happened today. A BMW X6 has just left, going to its new customer that's carried out uh, front end PPF and full ceramic coatings throughout. We've got Rolo down here, he's keeping us well looked after and growling at everybody as they walk through the door. Greg is just, literally we're coming up to the end of the day Hello. so Greg's kept the floor nice and clean, he's hiding around the corner somewhere and we've got Martin behind the camera, his new role in video production, camera specialist. Hi my name is Craig, thank you ever so much for tuning back in to watching the answers for the questions that you left on the previous video. So first of all we're going to start with the first question which was what is the best shampoo for matte paint, or PPF or vinyl? So what we would use is Gion Bathe or Bathe Essence, a uh, really highly concentrated shampoo which is perfect for all paint types or vinyl types and PPF, whether it be gloss or satin. So another question that we had, thank you, was do we remove badges upon request? And the answer is yes. There are multiple different ways to remove badges, whether it be string, heat guns, all sorts. Uh, but yes, you can remove badges. Uh, if you did want to make a template of where the badge was, if you was removing it for a reason and then replacing the badge or a, another new badge, yes, make a template, remove, do what you need to do and then reinstall the badge after. So can we explain the full installation process of paint protection film to a degree? It is a quite long and lengthy process but we'll keep it nice and simple. First of all you just want to make sure that the paint and the surface that you're applying paint protection film on is utterly clean, free of products, greases, dust. You would spray your slip solution first, squeegee, repeat again, Take your piece of film, whether it's a bulk piece of film or a pattern, lay that down and squeegee the water from underneath until you got all to the edges and then you would either wrap or tuck your edges where possible. Okay, so what is the average time that we would spend doing paint correction and what are the difficulties we would face? So, there is no average time for us, we don't dedicate a specific amount of time to a machine polish. Uh, we have systems and processes in place that we have to carry out and once we've carried out those systems and processes would lead to the result in what we're trying to achieve, single or two stage or even a three stage machine polish. That could take anywhere in a minimum of a day, it could stretch into two or even three days. But ultimately don't get yourself caught up into a position where you're timing yourself or trying to get a, a machine polish or paint correction done within a period of time. Don't commit to a time scale or time frame, just set yourself the standard that you want to achieve and complete that until the car is finished and that will give you the amount of time that you would often spend on a car but it varies so much that it's very difficult to put a default time on there. Yeah. Okay so difficulties faced when uh, machine polishing or doing a paint correction on clients cars. Myself as well as others have been doing it for a very long time so we take for granted those difficulties that some would face when they're starting out and one thing that we've just asked Greg about is what do you, what's your, what are your thoughts when it comes to the difficulties? Now, most difficulties through machine polishing or paint correction would come from using a rotary machine polisher. That's when things get very, very difficult when it comes to body angle, position, and what's your angle of attack when going to solve a specific uh, issue with the paint. Access is another thing. So what machine are you going to use to get at the angle where the defect is? using extension bars, using high or fast or low speeds, what pad combination, there's lots of variations that will come into solving that problem. So biggest things that we face in terms of difficulties is how are we going to get around and what is the best solution to solving this specific problem. So how to get known in the business, um, the most immediate things to do would be to start locally, so start leaflet dropping, tell everybody about in your immediate area about the services that you provide. Then stretch out a little bit further as your skills start to progress, you can start then posting those results on social media. Again, keeping it ni nice and local, don't start pushing it out there for the world to see. Keep things nice and simple until your confidence starts building up and then just grow from there. So if you focus on your local community, there should be enough people present within the area 
to keep you busy for many, many years. How do you clean and maintain Alcantara and also any marketing tips? So we'll start with the marketing tips and we'll go back to the Alcantara shortly. Marketing tips, again, start things very, very simple. Use local newspapers, local magazines, leaflet dropping, start to let your local immediate area know about the services you provide. Then start progressing from there, taking those results, applying it to social media, Facebook, TikTok, there's all sorts of different things out there that people respond to. Set yourself a, a style, keep it consistent. So whether you post on a specific time of day, keep it there. Uh, look into your analytics, understanding when people are looking at your website, when people are looking at your social media and post based on those uh, analytic results. Also have a website. A website is gonna be massively important in terms of people finding out what those uh, contact information details are, but also requesting your services via a form. In addition, that would mean also them leaving feedback. Feedback is also gonna be important in terms of getting an understanding of how your customers who have had work done by you, how you're going to improve and work on those, those uh, bits of information coming from your feedback. Um, word of mouth is a massive, for me, um, is encouraging people to go away from your uh, studio, experiencing your work and telling a friend or family member how good you are. That is the most organic and natural way of getting a good word spread about you. Encourage people to maybe offer them a free bottle of shampoo or product if they were to recommend a friend. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you also for leaving those questions in the last video. Don't forget to add questions to this video for us to answer in the next one. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe, like, tap the bell button, to be notified when our next video is uploaded. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon.